there is a law in the Isle of Man that affects all of us, relates to the field of privacy, and that I think we should finally look at changing. Let me explain. At the moment, if you are being arrested in the Isle of Man and you are being charged with a crime and brought up to the courts, then the local media, as part of the court reporting and with some exceptions, are allowed to publish your full details as part of their coverage. This means your name, and that's full first name and last name, your address and even your picture can and very often are published in the local media. And this is before you have even been found guilty of any crime. I think that is simply not acceptable anymore. I don't think it was ever acceptable. I don't know why this was ever allowed. And I think it's really time we look at changing it. And I hope that with this video, I can persuade you to see things my way and help me do so. So let's say you did something silly, or maybe you didn't even, and you got uh, accused of something that you have not done, but you suddenly find your name and your address and your picture in the paper as part of the reporting. What impact does that have on you? Well, as I told you in many of my videos, the Isle of Man is a very small place. It's a very close-knit community. It's the size of a small English town. It's 85,000 people. And if anyone does anything here, people know very, very quickly. And of course, if your picture is in the paper, they will know even faster. So you may now say, uh, but Frank, surely the reporting will say, Joe Blocks has been accused of this crime. He has pleaded not guilty, so clearly he's, you know, innocent until proven guilty. What's the big deal that says he, he says he hasn't done it? I think there is a problem with that, um, simply because these days we live in a time where we way too often have trial by Facebook. And there are people out there who like to judge a little bit too quickly and who, you know, just by seeing someone's picture in the paper or online and social media, where, of course, these things are being shared by the media all the time, you know, people will file comments like, oh, no smoke without fire, I always knew he was dodgy and that kind of thing. And that's just very, very harmful. Also, it is not just the person, him or herself, who are affected by this. It's their loved ones, it's their family, it's their friends. And of course, it's the, the, the person's mental health. It can be the person's career. If you're wrongly accused of something and, you know, it happens, then this can have a profound and totally disproportionate and, and horrible effect on your life that nobody really deserves. So no, I, think, I don't think that is right. So next you're going to say, now, ha, Frank, but what about once that person has been found guilty by the courts? Surely we should be allowed to know who the criminals are that live in our community once they have been found guilty, right? Eh, not really. Point A, if someone has committed a very, very serious offense, then there are already systems in place. And if there is a public interest, then, yeah, we will know about it. And, you know, if someone is of such grave danger to society in general, then there are systems there and we will know about it. And we probably should know about it. For example, if we have, you know, a terrorist or something like that um, in our midst, that is of public interest. But we have to separate very, very clearly between what is of public interest, so what is, you know, should be published to keep the public safe, and what is simply you being nosy. Because it's a big, big difference, okay? Only that you want to know something doesn't know doesn't mean you should know that. It is of absolutely no public interest that maybe your neighbor got a bit too drunk last week and ended up in court and got fined. That's a problem for that neighbor. It's gonna, you know, already affect him in a myriad of ways. It's gonna screw up his life most likely already without his picture being in the paper. So no, sometimes we really have to separate between us being nosy, and we live in a time where information is everywhere, right? I mean, it's it's at our fingertips all the time. We we demand to know everything immediately. It's just it's just a different world we live in now. But that doesn't mean we really should know all of that, and we have a right to know all of that. Yes, if someone has committed a very very serious offense and is a danger to society, then we probably should know, and we will know because there are already the systems in place. And you know, for example you're not going to say, hey, what if there's a really dangerous sex offender and he gets released and he tries to work uh, with kids again? Again, there are already systems in place. You have to do a background check with these things. There are monitoring programs. So, you know, that's where the courts already have have their, their systems in place. I recently applied for a taxi license and as part of, and you may not even notice, every single taxi driver in the Isle of Man 
has to do a extended DBS check, which is a very thorough criminal background check. And I had to do the same thing. It's a really long document. It costs you like 70 quid to get. And you have to tell them any offenses. And that's not just offenses uh, from here, also from abroad. For example, I lived in Manila. I had to give them a the equivalent from Manila just to prove I have no criminal convictions whatsoever. So there are already systems in place, you know, to keep us safe once someone has committed an offense. But equally, if it's a minor offense, a minor transgression, and none of us are perfect, don't please don't pretend that you are, then, you know, that shouldn't be carte blanche for the media to screw up someone's life, or it shouldn't have a disproportionate effect on someone's life. And I feel it has. It has an effect on people's careers, on their mental health, on the mental health of the people around them. And it just basically, it doesn't help. And to be honest, it feels a bit like a digital pillory. That's, that's really, you know, it feels medieval. That's what it feels like. And I don't think this should have a place in our time and in today's society. It's the courts that decide the punishments in this land, not Facebook, not the newspaper, not anyone else. But it feels like putting the full details before and after conviction into the local media in the way it is being done at the moment is an additional punishment. And I can't recall ever seeing a judge or a deemster, as we call them here, saying, I sentence you to a fine of 500 pounds and digital pillory by Facebook. It's not, okay? The punishment is whatever the court says. That's it. If you don't like that, change those laws. And the way we handle this at the moment, I think, is just very unhealthy. It, it really does more harm than good. And the only reason they do this, really, let's be honest here, and, you know, I challenge you, newspapers and radio stations and all of you lot to prove me wrong because I know you can't. The only reason they do this is not to keep us safe and to say, oh, you know, we report about crime. It's to sell newspapers. And it is, unfortunately, at the moment, a perceived race to the bottom when it comes to the quality of reporting on the Isle of Man in all media. Now, all the, the media outlets here, you know, they have trained journalists and they're good guys, but they are all competing for the same small pool of readers and listeners and viewers. And that means they are, you know, more and more desperate to get clicks. And that's why I say a race to the bottom. It doesn't mean that they're bad people or bad journalists. It's just they are in a very high pressure environment with very limited budgets. And they have to get as many eyeballs and as many clicks to their particular news story on their particular website and in order to compete with the competition. It's very crowded in the media landscape out here and there's not much money in it. So that's why they do it. You know, they, they do their job. They do their job within the rules that they have. Of course, there are exceptions. So they're not allowed to, you know, in circumstances where there's minors or where the courts say otherwise, then they're not allowed to report it. But by and large, they are allowed to report the way they do. And that means they can all your public uh, personal details in it. And they know full well that, you know, a headline of X, Y, Z, caught with this and that, sells papers and gets clicks. That's what they do it. Okay, that, that's the primary reason. There's nothing to do with keeping the island safe or you know whatever they may say i don't think they have said that but you know if they were to say that it's just it's rubbish come on um so yeah it's to sell papers and i, I don't think that is right so how could we uh, solve this well there's a number of ways to do it number one would be for the courts to simply decide tomorrow not to release the details anymore it's perfectly within their remit i believe to do so and they could just say, hey, we're not publishing this anymore, or we're not publishing the full names, or you're not publishing the full names, and that's the end of it. Number two would be the local media agreeing to a voluntary code not to do that anymore. Maybe within the framework for very, very serious offenses, again, where an offender does present a risk to society and where there is a public interest, as found by the courts, under their guidance, under their framework, where, you know, we could still say that. But otherwise, where the local media voluntarily decide not to publish the full details anymore and thereby, you know, sort of uh, up the level of reporting, I would say, the quality of reporting and the integrity of it as well. Because uh, this, guys, this does not make you look good, okay? It does not. It does not make me think of you as really good journalists by dragging people through the media for minor stuff. And the third option, of course, is to change the law. You know, go to Tinwald and ask them to change things. And basically make it the law, well, make the law in such a way that they're not allowed to do it anymore. 
And there are many countries where this already is the, is the case. For example, the one I'm from, Germany, when I first moved here, I was utterly shocked to see people's full names and details in the paper, even if they're not being found guilty, and even if they've been found guilty of small stuff that probably all of us have done at some point where we didn't get caught. Yeah, I was shocked to see that, because in Germany, if you are being arrested and it's being reported about, then A, they're not allowed to give your full name, they may be allowed to give your first name and an initial of the last name, or sometimes only your initials. They're certainly not allowed to print your address, and they're certainly not allowed to print a clear picture of you. Now, if they do print a picture, they have to um, you know, either put a bar over your, your eyes or pixelate you, but they're not allowed to print the whole picture. And this extends even to you know, really, really serious crimes. So sometimes when you have say they, they caught some terrorists in Germany or something, then you will see that terrorist literally just referred to as, you know, Joe A dot with a pixelated face. And you're going to say, hey, hey, this guy is a terrorist. Why are we not allowed to know that? And it can be a little hard to, to you know, explain that sometimes, but it's the same rules for everyone. And again, the courts then have methods and, and frameworks and laws in place to make sure this terrorist is not... A dangerous to society anymore or this offender whatever may have done but it's down to the police and the courts to do that not down to the facebook reader what are you going to do with that information if you see someone's clear picture you're going to spit at them in tesco or something is that what you're going to do is that how you're going to keep us safe you won't so it's you know it's for the authorities to do that job within their frameworks it's not for us so yeah a model as it is in germany would be very good where you cannot publish the full name you cannot publish the address and you cannot publish a clear or an identifiable picture and this has really been something that's been on my mind for a long time. I've always noticed this. The first time I noticed this when I moved here 23 years ago. And what really pushed me into actually doing it and doing this video and trying to sort of start a bit of a political pressure or at least put it on people's minds was a newspaper article not too long ago where I love my newspaper published this. Now I pixelated the person's face, okay? The original newspaper article was his uh, face clearly visible, but the bar over the dog's eyes, that was out of my newspapers. So they published, I can't remember what, what, what the offense was, and it, do, it doesn't matter for this context, okay? This bloke had his picture put in the paper, this clear picture of his face, accused of whatever it was, and someone found it, did you think that was funny or something? To, to put a bar over the dog's eyes? Well, was it supposed to be humorous? Is, that, is this the level you're operating on? Is this, is this what we do? Is this how, how nonchalantly you treat people's lives? Because that isn't funny. That's unprofessional. And that it was this, this story among many, many that sort of was like, okay, this is, I think we should do something about this. I think we need to change this. And I think it would ultimately, you know, it would not protect criminals. We have rules in place. If you have committed minor transgressions, if you have, you know, committed crimes and even been found guilty that, you know, really don't make you dangerous to society, then everyone has the right you know, to rebuild their lives and to continue. And that's why we have things like the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act, where I'm actually wondering how this kind of reporting sits under that. For very serious crimes, again, we already have a framework. You know, society is being protected from those very, very serious criminals where there is a public interest, and there should be public interest exceptions, absolutely. But for, you know, your everyday, stole a few milk bottles, got pissed in the pub, um, the minor stuff. And let's face it, over here, what crimes do we get? I mean, the... The most crimes we get is alcohol or drugs, okay? Fights in a pub or some minor drug dealer being busted. That's it. There, there isn't much more. And for most of these, you know, we should allow people to get on with their lives and try and rebuild their lives and re rehabilitate because the times when we, you know, executed people publicly, those are long gone. These days, we try and have justice that is not only just, but that also rehabilitates that, you know, you made a mistake, you got punished for it, now live a better life. That is the approach we have, okay? And this seems to be against it. So, yeah, I would love to see a German system where, you know, you you cannot publish a person's detail and address and the picture, even after they've been found guilty, with very, very minor exceptions for very, very serious crimes that are in the public interest or in national interest, for example, you know, um, because there's nothing gained from it. And just you being nosy or, you know, and, and being nosy is, is in, in our nature, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's something bad. Um, it's just, it, it's natural for us to want to know and to want to click on things. And it's natural for the newspapers and the media to try and make money with it. That's their job. 
but it's the lawmakers' jobs to make sure that this is done in a reasonable way. I don't think it is at the moment. Uh, the next step I will do is, A, I want to hear you know your comments and your feedback on this, and B, I will write to all MHKs to get their opinions of it, because I really think we need a wider debate on this. And I'd also love to hear from the media, you know, give me your comments, you know, you have my contact details, all of you. Uh, let me know what you think, Manx Radio, let's do an interview or something, you know, talk about it. Because I think we can create a healthier and equally safe society by being a bit more careful how we pe treat people's privacy in regards to court and crime reporting. And, you know, in everything else we do, just to round this off, we're always after, you know, so many privacy laws these days and GDPR this and data protection there. Yet we allow people who haven't even been found guilty of anything to be dragged through the papers like that. It just doesn't sit right anymore in today's times. This may have been acceptable 20, 30, 40 or 100 years ago. It is not anymore in 2023. So let me know what you think. I think we should change this. Maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. Let's talk about it and let's maybe change it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.